good? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think there are probably a lot of current and former students of Mrs. Nancy Cook here. And uh, we're going to be honoring her. So, Nancy, you can come closer. <laughs> So. Uh, first of all, by way of introduction, I am not Mother Goose, I am not Betsy Ross. I am Julia Roberts, President of the Association for Rollinsford Culture and History, uh, ARCH for short. Uh, you may know ARCH as the people who maintain the historic Colonel Paul Wentworth House here in town. Um, and our mission at the Wentworth House is to main it, maintain it as an educational and cultural center for the community and to promote an appreciation for the rich history of our own special corner of New England. Now, I know we all love Rollinsford here, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and there are a lot of things that we love about Rollinsford. Um, particularly, uh, a lot of us, especially those of us at Arch, really love Rollinsford's history and its culture. We have a very deep and long and rich history. And people, many people have shown their love and appreciation for Rollinsford Heritage in, in a variety of ways. Some by preserving its historic buildings, some by collecting photos, artifacts, and memorabilia. Others by researching and sharing stories of our town's past. Several years ago, Arch established the Arch Heritage Award to recognize those people who have made a significant contribution to preserving uh, uh, the heritage and history of our community. And today we are pleased to honor uh, and present the 2021 award to one of those people. Many here probably know Nancy Cook as a teacher at Rollinsford Grade School where she has taught art for 27 years. <laughs> While learning about art, her students have also developed an appreciation for their community's history as Nancy has incorporated lessons on the natural resources of the Salmon Falls River, the early colonial settlers, the history of the textile mills, and the settlement of the village and the town. In 2012, Nancy initiated and organized the 75th anniversary celebration of Rollinsford Grade School, which brought its history to life through skits, art, film, displays, and music. And as part of that celebration, she fully outfitted a complete re recreation of a 1936 classroom in our historic school building. What you might not know about Nancy is that she is a respected authority, lecturer, and teacher on the fiber arts, weaving, spinning, and knitting. She was one time manager of the costumes and furnishings department at Plymouth Plantation Museum down in Plymouth, Massachusetts and continues to sew custom period 17th century style clothing for the museum. She frequently donates her time and expertise to Arch for a wide array of events, including school programs, craft demonstrations, and living history events. At the Wentworth House in particular, she trained and led a team of volunteers who hand-stitched bed hangings for the canopy bed in the east chamber. And she's also created curtains for other rooms at the house and at other historic properties. And if that's not enough, Nancy and her husband Peter have welcomed numerous visitors and special interest groups to Tear Shirt Farm, their nationally known mid-18th century working farm in Berwick, which includes orchards, period buildings, and early breeds of livestock, along with a significant collection of looms, spinning wheels, and other fiber art tools. Arch takes great pleasure in presenting the 2020, uh, 2021 Arch Heritage Awards to a most deserving person, uh, our good friend Nancy Cook. many, many thank yous to many, many people. Um, I'm not going to um, 
be very long, but I do have a couple little notes. Um, some of my students will appreciate that I put my notes in a little sketchbook that we make in class, so they'll recognize this. I wanted them to know about that. Um, so it was really, really my good fortune um, that I found a position in a unique and special town, Rollinsburg, um, and a town that included a beautiful, intact, um, 19th century mill village. Um, there are abundant resources in this town that make educating the students in Rollinsburg but, uh, so easy. I mean, we can integrate so many subjects. Um, the river history, the early Rollinsburg history, early colonial history, through Arch, um, the mill history and all that that has to offer. And what's most wonderful, I think, is that it is still so um, present in our town because our, our mill village is so intact. Um, the students actually live um, in the village and in the town, and we can talk about how the town lands were used over the many years. So the textile mills are a tremendous resource. Um, the Rollinsford Grade School, I can't say enough about that. Um, it is the most um, engaging, supportive environment to teach in. Um, the teachers, the staff are very accessible um, to everyone and to their students. Um, all the teachers in the building have tremendous uh, background interests and so much to offer the students in our town. And then, of course, Arch. Um, and the Colonel Paul Wentworth House specifically, which um, provides an anchor for all the historical programs that go on within the town and that Arch supports. Um, so then on a personal note, I would thank my own art teachers who instilled a great love of art um, in me, going back to, uh, you know, my elementary years myself with my art teacher, Miss Heath. Uh, my teacher, Mr. Brown, in high school, who taught me to weave. Um, I happened to grow up in the town where my family settled when they came from Ireland. And because of that, I just developed a, a, a tremendous interest in, in colonial and in um, the history of a place. And I brought that with me to my adopted Berwick and to my adopted Rollinsford. So my dad, my, his whole family, my genealogy, my heritage is all um, there in Hingham, Massachusetts, but uh, again, this is my adopted home, but through him I learned to appreciate town history. Um, through my mom, who was a third grade teacher, I, uh, I guess I always knew I would be a teacher. She was always a teacher of, um, of, of school, and then also later um, she was engaged in fiber arts and uh, just taught me to to be a, a tremendous teacher. So those two things my mom and dad put um, put together for me. Uh, my husband here in front, Peter Cook, uh, who I met while working at Plymouth Plantation, um, is my partner in all things history, whether it's, uh, it, it could actually be just about anywhere in New England. We can find ourselves uh, curating or putting up an exhibit display or uh, doing a demonstration and uh, just bringing our things all over the all over all over the place so I do have a really quick anecdote for the students who happen to be here at the moment um, when when um, let's see when the kindergartners arrive I meet them on their first day at the Rollinsburg grade school uh, wearing a chef's hat and an apron and holding a spoon and this is so they will remember that I am mrs. cook <laughs> all right so once they once I'm sure they'll remember that I'm Mrs. Cook, I tell them that I really don't like to cook. I like to make art. So I take off the chef's hat and put on a beret and put down the spoon and pick up a paintbrush and I'm Mrs. Cook, the art teacher. So when I was reminiscing um, about some art uh, field trips recently, I was talking about um, a day that the school came up to the art house and I was dressed like Julia in period costume, uh, period garb, and um, I was hearth cooking, making applesauce and pancakes for the first and second graders that were there. So as I'm explaining this to the fifth and sixth grade, from the back of the room, one of the students said, but you don't like to cook. <laughs> and I answered by saying, 
um, that on that wonderful occasion, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So at, up at the Colonel Paul Wentworth House in, in the colonial garb and for the Rollinsford grade school, school students, um, cooking that day was a real joy. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hang this in my classroom. Ooh. So does anyone want to get pictures? Me! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Julia Roberts. I'm the president of the Association for Rollinsford Culture and History, ARCH for short, and we are standing in front of the Colonel Paul Wentworth House, which is uh, maintained by ARCH as an educational and cultural center for Rollinsford and the surrounding community. Okay, so my name is Lucy Putnam and I am the secretary uh, of the organization as well as um, the chair of the development committee. And um, ARCH is a completely volunteer run organization. It has been from the start. Um, the interesting piece about this house is that we sometimes nickname it the house that came home. It is a house that was moved, it was built in 1701, but then moved to Massachusetts, to Dover, Massachusetts in 1936. And then we had the opportunity to bring it back in the early 2000s and we were able to rally support from the town, from um, some various grants, from the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, from the Elchip Foundation, so various, um, various foundations, but allowed us to bring the house back. But really the root of it was the donations and the excitement that the town had for, the, um, for this house and the project of bringing it home. And that has continued to be the base of support for the organization. Um, our membership, uh, donations that we receive, um, support that we receive from local organizations, and the value that people see of this wonderful resource that we have right here in Rollinsford. Thank you. Let's just walk over here on the <laughs> We're here today because uh, Arch established um, the Arch Heritage Award several years ago to recognize the many people who have made significant contributions to uh, the preservation and celebration, if you will, of the heritage and history of Rollinsford and the surrounding community. And uh, our awardee this year was Nancy <laughs> Cook. Uh, so we are here today to celebrate her her contributions, which are many and varied, to uh, preserving, spreading the history of uh, our community, and developing an appreciation for our history, particularly among the young people at the grade school, where Nancy is the art teacher, but more than an art teacher, so much more than an art teacher. <laughs> lean-to part of the house, which we believe was added on to the house probably in the 1740s. And this is the cooking fireplace. And yes, we actually do do hearth cooking on this fireplace. We do demonstrations at some of our living history events and also the occasional private hearth cook dinner. Um, so a lot of that cooking takes place not in there where the fire is, but out here on the hearth, this brick hearth. We'll uh, shovel coals out from the fireplace 
and then we can uh, place something over the fire, such as uh, a trivet like this, a frying pan, the bake kettle, behind uh, that. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do on the hearth in front of the fire. Um, the other piece of equipment that we often use, which is actually more late 18th century, is this item, which is a tin kitchen. And it's used for roasting meat. Uh, the meat would actually be skewered on the spit here. Yep. Uh, and then the open side is placed in front of the fire. If you need to turn the heat up, you move it closer. <laughs> if you need to turn the heat down, you move it away. Open the door to face uh, the meat, check and see how it's doing. Uh, turn it from time to time if you need to. Position it this way. And then uh, on the other side, there's a little handy little spout for off meat drippings because drippings are important. So, so when we do a hard dinner, we usually roast some kind of meat in the tin kitchen. Yeah. Uh, this is the bake oven over here. Uh, it's not used as frequently because it's really, really big. Uh, and in order to use it, you actually build a fire inside the bake oven and let it burn for about two hours to heat up the bricks. And just to demonstrate the capacity, that's how deep it is. So um, a good housewife usually, I mean, a good housewife knows how many, how many loaves of bread, how many cakes and things like that the family's going to consume in a week. She'll actually have a baking day. And uh, that's the main thing she's going to be doing. The fire in the bake oven takes about two hours. And then it stays warm for a long time. Uh, so it's, it's fun experimenting with hard cooking here because it's one thing about colonial life that a lot of people can relate to, because everybody eats. Uh, but it's like, so how did they cook the food that they eat? This way. Um, I'm Nancy Cook, and uh, I was very pleased today to receive the Arch Heritage Award. Um, I've been associated with Arch since its beginning and when the Colonel Paul Wentworth House was brought to the town, brought back to the town of Rollinsburg, um, very um, interested in uh, teaching the students at the Rollinsburg grade school um, through my art classes. I teach them about the history of our town, our community, all of its many beautiful resources. And, also, we, on occasion, bring field trips up to the house. Um, some of them might be art related. Some of them are about the um, time period in which the house was built and occupied. Um, others are about domestic life in the 18th century. Um, there's just a wide variety of topics that can be um, addressed. And um, as you can see, with in-person, um, uh, an in-person guide from uh, pretending to portray a person from the 18th century. So this makes it particularly meaningful to the grade school students. So I feel like I've brought, I brought the house into the, the house and realms for culture into my classroom when I teach, but I've also brought the children here um, to share um, the history with them. This is part of the lean-to attic of the house. Uh, and in the 18th century, it certainly would have been used for storage, but also potentially as sleeping quarters for servants or members of the family. And occasionally when we have living history events here, uh, sometimes members of the reenactment units may choose to sleep in here. And that's why we have this cot here. This is one of our board members. That's where he sleeps when he comes. Um, but one of the interesting things about the lean-to attic is that we can use it to talk about timber frame construction because you can see uh, the rafters and the purlins very clearly and you also see right here these hash marks that were uh, used by uh, house framers in the 18th century to sort of mark the different boards and, and where they went. Don't ask me to interpret them because I can't. <laughs> But uh, a lot of the timber framing would be actually fitted together on the ground because you can't carve these uh, mortise and tenons uh, and fit it all together properly upright. So they would fit it together on the ground and then you could raise it up together. 
I'm in the east bed chamber of the Colonel Paul Wentworth house and behind me there's a arched canopy Sheridan style bed. The bed was returned to the house uh, by the Wentworth family and we created bed hangings for it and dressed it as a bed would be in the 18th century because it came just as a frame. So maybe about 10 years ago on the return of the bed we decided it should look fully dressed. We wanted one room in the house to um, appear as it had in the 18th century, be furnished, especially with a piece that had come back from the family. So um, I was contacted to uh, help find an appropriate 18th century style fabric. This is a reproduction produced by Colonial Williamsburg that we were able to secure. And I, I am familiar with this design canopy, so I cut the curtains out, but we gathered together a group of local seamstresses or women, volunteers, that wanted to learn to um, sew canopy bed hangings and volunteer at the Colonel Paul Wentworth House. And we met weekly for about 10 or 12 weeks um, for about three or four hours at a time, right downstairs and worked on the curtains so they are fully hand stitched. Um, and then after creating the curtains, we did also dress the rest of the bed with the appropriate bedding, meaning mattresses, feather tickings, uh, bedspread, and then you'll see on the bed, there's an example of the different kinds of sheets and blankets that would be used in the 18th century. Uh, today sort of looked like a dining room. Uh, in Colonel Paul Wentworth's time, this is simply uh, it's called the hall. And a hall was an all-purpose room. Uh, used for cooking, for eating, for entertaining, for sleeping. And when the house was first built, this was the kitchen. Uh, and in fact, in his probate inventory of 1748, they referred to this as the old yeah, kitchen. The and in the lean-to, that's the new kitchen. So that makes us think this is a fairly new addition across the back of the house, maybe sometime in the 1740s. Um, but for us now, it functions as a dining room. Uh, the chairs are reproduction, Windsor chairs, uh, that were financed by generous donors to one of our auctions. Um, and we, uh, when health conditions permit, we host private park cook dinners in here. So uh, eight to 10 people can sit around the table and enjoy um, a meal that's cooked in the kitchen over the hearth and served in 18th century style. Okay. And this was the best room in the house. So it has uh, the extensive wood paneling, it has the deep window seats, uh, and we know what was in this room in 1748 when Colonel Paul Wentworth passed away because he did a probate inventory. And his best furniture was in this room meant to impress visitors. So this is where he would entertain, entertain important visitors. And so it included um, a bed with bed and bedstead with bed hangings. So there were, there were other beds in the house, but this was the only one that had bed hangings in this room. Um, a desk, a large looking glass, an engraving, I believe it was of Solomon's Temples. Uh, I think a large oval table. Oh, a chest of drawers and a dozen chairs, wow. all in this room. Uh, and it's an interesting contrast with the room immediately overhead, which we think was actually his bed chamber, uh, because there was a bed, but no bed hangings. Uh, there was a pine chest, but not a chest of drawers, uh, a small meat looking glass, but still a dozen chairs. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 